it genuinely seems like Corsair is finally back to making cases that aren't bad. Corsair had a number of years in a row where the case releases were, at best, uh, well, they left a lot to be desired. And at worst, there were some bad ones in there. Now, though, the 4000D back in about October of 2020 was a turning point for Corsair. It was a return to form where the company finally looked like it was starting to listen and get back to the, the core principles of case design and stop just trying to put a bunch of glass and LEDs into a blender and hitting in maximum settings, seeing what comes out. Because that's what they were doing for a few years with the things like the 680X. So the 5000D is what we're reviewing today. The 5000D is a very quick follow-up to the 4000D, but it's not a replacement. They're different cases in size and in focus, but they take a lot of the same core principles. The 5000D, as we were looking through it point by point, has resolved a lot of our individual complaints about the 4000D, which is great news. So we're going to look through that today and see what new complaints arise with this larger case. Uh, that does also come with two different panels. So reviewing the Airflow and the non-Airflow versions today. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. In terms of Target, the 4000D is priced at around $95 to $100, depending, and this is about $150. So it's a different price target entirely. But our first immediate complaint about it when we looked at it was, did they, it's really just the same two fans. So this is a downside immediately where it's just one front fan, one back fan, and that means you're going to be splitting airflow between the CPU and the GPU. One of them will run warmer than the other. And at $150, that does feel kind of cheap because it's, it's either you commit to a philosophy of the user will provide their own fans and you give them zero, or you provide an adequate amount and, and quantity of fans for your $150 case. So that was a bit of a downside. But overall, the case has made several improvements to key features we've complained about in the 4000D. And if you look at the front panel too, it's a lot different than previous cases Corsair's done. And it's uncommon for other manufacturers too, where they've got these deeper cutouts on the side that sort of chamfer inwards in the trapezoidal pattern. And so this ends up making it so that the solid panel cases are actually not uh, necessarily completely terrible, unlike a lot of other solid panel cases where you're basically just incinerating your components. And it's, it's an interesting attempt to having that solid panel while still allowing some reasonable amount of air to get into the sides. And we'll be testing that in the thermals yeah. later. Just like we said with the 4000D, one of Corsair's strong points, despite some of its weak points we've talked about is attention to detail, specifically really fine detail. So Corsair's got someone with a sharp eye working on these cases uh, because there are small features like having any surface where metal contacts metal, Corsair has color matched stickers overlapping the point of contact so that the uh, abrasion from any kind of movement doesn't just rub the paint off of the panels. Another small thing that we noticed is that just like with the 4000D, the dust filters have painted over magnets. So this is the bottom, obviously, it's just black. But they've painted over the top to color match the case. On the black case, these magnets on the top side are black. On the white case, they're uh, an off-white. And it's a small attention to detail thing where just painting them white instead of leaving them the default black color helps to blend in with the rest of the case. Another small attention to detail thing we noticed is you'll see here that the mesh actually extends past the magnet and in fact extends past the usable area of intake on the top panel. So there's, there's no functional benefit to extending out past the point of the magnet, except it looks a lot better. And there's some more surface area to provide uh, distribution of the weight of the, uh, the filter so that it doesn't quite sag as much over time. But when you put it back in there, the magnets are also arranged in a way they're off center when you look at the, the filter itself. But when you look at the top of the case, that's intentional so that the magnets don't overlap the screws. Uh, and obviously, it'd be kind of useless there because there's just a hole in that spot and a divot. As for other small attention to detail, the side panel of the case over here 
has a key dust filter that can only be inserted right side up. And uh, this also helps with carefully aligning the diagonal reinforcements on the filter to line up exactly with the row of triangular holes that are punched in the side panel. And also too, the holes in the filters are punched in the same panel or pattern as the holes in the panel. So there are two cases, 5000D, 5000D airflow. You can probably assume which one will review better with us given our approach to things. But we're gonna look at both of them and uh, we'll start with Patrick's build notes. He's extremely critical and has a sharp eye as well. So he's got a couple comments. We'll go through those and go through the thermals and conclusions. The 5000D has a lot of unique features. There's a massive hinged cable cover behind the side panel of the case, for example, similar to the ones found in the gigantic Obsidian 1000D. It does certainly make the motherboard side of the case look really clean in the transparent 1000D and in the 5000X, but it doesn't matter with the 5000D or the 5000D Airflow, both of which have a non-transparent steel panel over the side of the case. Covers can also be helpful when they can be fastened down with screws to keep magnetic side panels from popping open. But in the 5000D, the inverse is true. The cable cover is magnetic and the side panel uses screws. So the cable cover can be pushed open by cables and the side panel doesn't need reinforcement. There's a small hole in the cable cover directly over an internal case screw. So if this case screw were a little bit longer, it could actually be used to fasten down the cover. The cable bar inside the case is also a unique feature and is removable and it must be removed in order to use the side fan mounts at all. Even though they're both installed by default, the side radiator mount and the cable bar are mutually exclusive and users should remove one if they intend to use the other. Removing the plastic cable channels isn't necessary, but removing the straps is. So any configuration changes should be done before you start building in the case. Figure out how you want to lay it out. We see the cable bar as an optional cosmetic feature that users may find easier to remove than to work around. Its main purpose is to hide the big cable cutouts next to the motherboard tray and the rubber grommets within. These are one of the few elements that aren't color matched in the white version of the case, so that's part of the hiding. Snaking a 24 pin ATX power cable underneath the bar and then angling it back around into the motherboard is difficult unless the motherboard's power connector is mounted at a right angle. The same goes for any of the other thicker cables that must reach this side of the motherboard, primarily USB 3.0, SATA, and PCIe power cables. Corsair is clearly aware of this difficulty, since a right angle USB 3.0 adapter is shipped in the accessory kit, which is a good thing, but they're aware of it. We left the cable bar in place for testing, except when using side intake fans, but if we were to use this case for an office build, it's likely we'd take the cable bar out entirely. There's approximately three and a half centimeters between the hinged cable cover and the motherboard tray, with even more space behind the cable bar if it's installed although the bar doesn't have many points at which to tie down cables and it suffers from other issues like we've just discussed. Corsair includes a huge bundle of 15 Velcro straps with this case, enough to fully populate the plastic cable channels with eight left over. And we had previously noted in the 4000D review that it only had three points which were specifically intended to use with these straps. So the 5000D is a huge improvement here. It seems like Corsair is listening. The PSU shroud is cut down to a length which gives the space for fans and radiators on both the normal front mount and the side mount. The case ships with a plastic shroud extension that reduces clearance, but still gives space to both mounts. This can be swapped with a power supply optional cover plate in the accessory kit that ultimately just caps off the end of the power supply shroud, keeping the interior of the case looking neat while also still allowing the most possible room for cooling hardware at the front of the case. This is another cosmetic choice. With the power supply mounted in the standard fan down orientation, power supply cooling is a closed loop, and capping or uncapping the end of the PSU shroud would have no real impact on the power supply itself. If anything, blocking the end of the shroud is just another obstacle to airflow, depending on where your front fans are oriented. The hard drive cage underneath the power supply shroud may be mounted in three locations, but the rearmost position gives barely any wiggle room from an ATX power supply, and the other two positions are incompatible with the power supply cover plate. In other words, using the cover plate basically eliminates support for three and a half inch drives. One negative aspect of the 4000D, which hasn't been improved in the 5000D, is that one of the thumb screws on the hard drive cage is difficult to access when a power supply is installed in the case. So there's still a few things they can clean up. Corsair's manual claims compatibility with EATX motherboards up to 305 by 277 millimeters. EATX isn't a thing, but the millimeter sizing is helpful. We wouldn't recommend installing anything larger than a standard ATX board in this case though, 
because installing a board of the maximum size specified by Corsair would require removing the cable bar, and the board would block multiple cable cutouts and come uncomfortably close to the side panel fans. The front fan mount is subtly different than the one in the 4000D, but in entirely positive ways. One feature of the 4000D that we criticized was the set of cutouts on the front fan mount that were three 120mm circles, clearly intended for three 120mm fans in specific placements, so that 140mm fans would be misaligned and partially blocked off. The cutouts in the 5000D are still positioned around three 120mm mounts, but the cutouts are slightly wider now, making it more practical to use up to two 140mm front intake fans. The metal of the tray is thicker on the 5000D at approximately 1.25 millimeters versus approximately 0.85 on the 4000D, including paint. And this helps prevent another issue that we had with the 4000D, which was the delicate metal of the fan bracket bending inwards and clipping the fan blades. The tray is also removable now, making radiator installation easier. So once again, lots of things cleaned up. Radiator compatibility is also improved over the 4000D. We noted in that review that 360mm radiators wouldn't fit in the front of the case, even though there are three 120mm fan mounts that would, because the radiator's overhang would directly conflict with the front I.O. The 5000D can support 360mm radiators on the side, the front, or the top mount, and in a true fashion, although there isn't enough space to use the side and front mounts simultaneously. The I.O. unit is on top of the chassis rather than inside, so there's minimal interference with internal components. Moreover, the cutouts at the front of the power supply shroud are large enough, with the shroud extension removed, that it's feasible to install 360mm closed loop liquid coolers tubes down at the front and side of the case, as long as the tubes are long enough. The 5000D's front filter is similar to the 4000D's, but it uses a thicker frame, which stabilizes the mesh and prevents it from wrinkling or getting sucked into the fans over time. Interestingly, Corsair has chosen to reinforce the side filter, so they clearly do consider the reinforcement to be beneficial. The side filter locks into place in the side panel, preventing it from sliding around during installation, which can be an issue in other cases with side vents like the Lian Li 11 Dynamic. Distance between the surface of the front fans and the front panel itself has increased from 2 cm in the 4000D to 3 cm in the 5000D. Clearance for the top panel is also 3 centimeters. This unusually large offset looks kind of cool, but it should also give plenty of breathing room to any fans installed in the front or top of the case, even in the non-airflow model. The fans included with the 5000D are almost exactly the same as the two 120mm fans included with the 4000D, and in exactly the same quantity. The 5000D's fans are 4-pin and accept PWM control, and by default are connected to a 6-way PWM fan hub included in the case. We'd like to see better fans included with this higher-end case, especially at the price delta versus the 4000D, but Corsair has reserved that for the 5000X. As far as we can tell, every individual component of the 5000D or X is listed as a separate product SKU on Corsair's website. This might just be for RMA purposes, because we weren't able to order them. There's the front bezel, the I.O. panel, the shroud cover, shroud extension, right tempered glass side panel, not the left, the feet, the front panel. These are the only items that have add to cart buttons, but they didn't work at the time of writing. We'd appreciate seeing a different front and side panel available for sale separately, although offering individual tempered glass panels would undermine the value of the 5000X. And because we're covering two cases together here, we ran an unusually high count of thermal tests for this review. 18, including retests. The standard suite of torture tests, GPU stress tests, blender, CPU and GPU tests, noise normalized torture tests, standardized fan torture tests, and just noise, were run with both cases, with the exception of the no front panel test, which we only ran on the 5000D and not the airflow, since it would have been almost entirely redundant. We also ran an additional test in the 5000D with the single intake fan moved to the side intake vent. Starting with just the 4000D and 5000D CPU results, the combined torture workload planted baseline CPU temperature at 53 degrees Celsius above ambient in the 5000D. Without a front panel, that average dropped to 48, which was also the average with both the top and front airflow panels installed. Moving the intake fan to the side vent didn't help, raising the average temperature to 56 degrees. The fans Corsair used are built with the intention of focusing the airflow into a narrow, tightly directed funnel, which is not helpful when they're mounted perpendicular to the PC components. The temperature improvement with the front panel plate of the 5000D removed indicates that it does obstruct airflow, so it's worth considering side mounting radiators rather than front mounting them. 
When installing intake fans without a radiator, though, the direct airflow from front-mounted fans is more beneficial than the less restricted airflow from side-mounted fans. In the 5000D airflow, front mounting is definitely better, since the airflow plate has a negligible effect on temperatures. Despite the intake fan being more distant from the components to be cooled than in the 4000D, the 5000D compares favorably to the smaller cases in uh, both the airflow and non-airflow configurations. With solid panels, the 4000D averaged 59 degrees over ambient versus the 5000D's 53 degrees. And the ventilated panels in the 4000D averaged 50 versus 48 in the 5000D. The tweaks to the front and top panels and the generally larger chassis size helps including the deep vents on the front flanks, even without improvements to the stock vents. Comparatively, 48 degrees is tied with the P400A Digital, a case that ships with three fans and is one of the better temperatures we've recorded for mesh-fronted cases. Perhaps more impressively, 53 degrees with the solid panel still only pushes the 5000D down to the middle of the chart, a little cooler than the stock mesh of IC. We rarely see closed-fronted cases perform this well. In the non-airflow 5000D, GPU temperature during the torture test averaged 57 degrees above ambient, and removing the front panel didn't change that. The average with the airflow panels rounded to 58 degrees, but the unrounded result is less than one degree warmer than the non-airflow result, so all three of these numbers are effectively tied. The 5000D comes with a single stock intake fan, which is positioned in the middle slot in an attempt to split airflow between the CPU and the GPU. It doesn't do much for the GPU, allowing a dead zone to form at the bottom of the case, hence the minimal change resulting from changing the front panel. A more positive contributing factor is the design of the front panel, which isn't overly restrictive even with the non-airflow plate installed. Moving the front intake to the side intake did slightly decrease the average GPU temperature down to 55 degrees, but this was helped by the fact that the side fan mounts are slightly lower than the front mounts. So even though we used the center mount in both instances, the side intake fan was lower and focused more on the GPU. The 4000D averaged 56 degrees in solid configuration with 52 in airflow, compared to the 5000D's 57 to 58 degree average in all configurations. The GPU cooling performance is the inverse of the CPU cooling that we just praised, placing the 5000D at the hot end of the chart next to the Sekira 500X, as well as the stock Mesh of IC, which has cooling issues closely related to the 5000Ds. Both cases use two 120mm fans, one intake and one exhaust, and both have the intake fan placed in the middle of the case in a way that's intended to benefit both the GPU and the GPU, but ends up favoring the CPU. One potential fix would be to move the intake fan a little lower, but the nature of Corsair's front mounts means that the 120mm fans only have about 2 centimeters of wiggle room. Normally we'd have Blender results here, but we're just going to put them in the article, which will be linked in the description below and published about a day later than the video, if you care about the uh, single component load. Standardized fans is an opportunity to check thermals with what we would consider a more optimal fan configuration. Because of the poor GPU thermals in earlier tests, we decided to populate the lower two slots, but left the shroud extension in place to keep the case as stock as possible. We suggest removing the shroud extension to get the most benefit from a fan installed in the bottom slot. CPU temperature suffered with this new arrangement in the solid fronted 5000D, increasing to 59 degrees above ambient on average. Conversely, the 5000D airflow was unaffected, remaining at 48 degrees average. Using the two large and fairly fast intake fans may overwhelm the ability of the solid panel to let air in and encourage recirculation through the empty top fan slot, while the airflow panel simply allows cool air in. 48 degrees isn't bad, tied with the Silent Base 802 and close to the Mesh 2 XL, but the 4000D averaged 46 degrees here and is doing better. No case except for the ENSO has gotten as hot as 59 degrees in this test, so the 5000D doesn't look great here. But this is at least partially because we chose a GPU-focused fan configuration. Using the top two slots would fix CPU thermals at the risk of creating another GPU dead zone, while populating all three slots would solve any recirculation problems. GPU temperatures followed a more predictable pattern, improving down to 52 degrees average in both the solid and airflow configurations with a standardized set of fans. Moving the fans lower in the case did effectively eliminate the dead zone here, so that's sort of what we were expecting. Our normal practice would be to place the intake fans right above the level of the power supply shroud. But because there are three designated mounting locations for fans at the front of the case, this sort of fine adjustment just isn't possible. 52 degrees is the middle of the chart, again close to the Meshify 2 XL, and right between the 4000D airflows 50 degree and 4000D solids 56 degree averages. The 5000D with the solid panel was measurably quieter than with the airflow panel, although not audibly quieter. It was 36.7 versus 38 dBA. 
Getting levels down to the 36 dBA threshold that we use for noise normalized testing required reducing the fan speeds to 93% with the solid panel and 85% with the airflow panel. In comparison to each other's results, the 5000D airflow is still better overall when noise normalized, although the average dBA temperature was slightly higher than in the solid configuration. In fact, noise normalizing had practically no effect on CPU and GPU temperatures in either case configuration, with the only significant difference from baseline being an increase in CPU temperature for the non-airflow case from 53 degrees baseline to 55. That's an extremely good result for the airflow configuration in terms of CPU temperature between the chart topping LAN cool 2 and 5 and the LAN cool 2 mesh, and uh, poor in terms of GPU temperature, worse than the 4000D solid. There are a lot of good cases on the market right now. Things like the LAN cool 2 on 5, the LAN Lee LAN cool 2 mesh, uh, outside of, well, and we'll give them credit for the O11 Dynamic as well, which is one of Lian Li's older best cases that they have right now. And outside of Lian Li, the Be Quiet Silent Base 802 offers a silence focused or a cooling focused, which couldn't arguably be silence focused configuration. The Fractal Meshify 2 XL is interesting in the larger size of Fractal cases, at least. And the Meshify 2 non XL is also a good case overall. And there's just there's a lot of competition in the space. The Fantax P400A, P500A, both very competitive cases. So this market is probably the fiercest that I've personally ever seen the case market in the last 13 or 14 or so years that I've been doing this. Our biggest problems here were with GPU thermals, especially with the solid panel case, where because Corsair has chosen to run just two fans with the $150 case, uh, instead of committing to either no fans or adequate fans, the GPU ends up getting sacrificed a bit in favor of CPU. So that's a downside. The solid panel version is entirely a cosmetic choice. The airflow version does in fact perform better, but the solid version of this performs better than the solid version of the 4000D in most instances, which is specifically because of the way that panel mounts and it has those two gaps on the sides to still allow a good amount of air in. We liked the 4000D overall. The 5000D, it almost seems like Corsair went through line by line in the review that we wrote and fixed every single point. Whether they were already aware of it or not, uh, it doesn't particularly matter. What matters is that the things, most of them that we were complaining about have been fixed. And hopefully we see this pattern continue. It's actually a little bit exciting to see Corsair as large of a company as it is now appear to actually care and make some changes in whatever it's doing in case whatever whether it's new staff or whatever uh, to improve the product because it was it was years of case reviews from us about Corsair cases where it just felt like every single time it was like well they've we thought they were at the bottom of the hill but turns out they could go further down the hill and now they're they're climbing their way back up uh, up the hill so that's good at $150 there is a lot of competition for this uh, the larger 5000D has a few advantages over the 4000D. Primarily, those, that's going to be radiator support, a little bit of cooling. But if you just want sort of this case look, except cheaper, the 4000D will get that for you with a few sacrifices along the way. And we've gone over those. If you want to look at, and we would encourage you to, some competing offerings before you pull the trigger on a case, we'd suggest looking at the Lancol 2 on 5, the Lan Lee Lancol 2 mesh, the, uh, might as well look at the O11 dynamic if you're not familiar with it. A little different though. The Fantax P400A and P500A are worth looking at. The Fractal Meshify 2 or the XL if you have some more money to spend. And then the Be Quiet Silent Base 802. There's a couple others in there too that we've reviewed. You can look at our case reviews playlist on YouTube and or on the website and see more. But it, it's a crowded market and all those cases that I just named are ones that we've been over uh, past the average point in our conclusions where it's, it's kind of positive to leaning positive and that's where this is too. It's, it's past the average mark and into the positive direction. And um, so yeah, plenty of options to look at. Uh, overall, we don't have too many problems with this one. They are mostly things that are resolvable with a little bit of user effort or some extra expenditure if you add a fan or two. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe for more as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly and get something in return, like one of our toolkits or our wireframe mouse mats. You can also go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get bonus footage. We shot a new behind the scenes video that is up there already and uh, talked about this case actually before this review went up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.